We are here and we are ready for the one and only finals of the week 17 scrim gym. Grand Canyon University Esports just finished a 41 minute brutal slugfest and are coming right after rushing through some pizza, cold pizza mind you, to get in here to the finals up against Y2150 Orange. We did not get to see their game number two because it wasn't played. Uh, they, uh, the team they're playing against had to drop out last second due to an emergency, which means that they got the buy into the finals, but that could mean that they are not warmed up, whereas Grand Canyon University Esports just finished a game. I am Jake Kelton, joined again by Wraith. What are you feeling after that last game, Wraith? I am feeling very excited. That was... One of those games that we very rarely get to see on this this channel. Oftentimes, recently, it's been a slugfest one way or the other, but that was just a very slow, drawn out. Lots of tension. Lots of. It felt like a stalemate. Like it was. It was very strongly in the favor of Gigabytes early, and then in toward the late game suddenly scaling comes online suddenly decision making comes online and grand canyon managed to pull out a victory very well played by them and like you said i hope that serves as a very good warm-up for them and do you have the room code for me oh you are not in here uh -huh. no uh -huh. i am that not a problem um <laughs> uh give me just a, spe a second and uh, I can I can get that for you. Uh, yeah, that that would be a little bit of a problem. Let me send you the code so that you can actually get in here while I introduce. We just finished some, seeing them. We get to see them again from the side of Grand Canyon University Esports. It's Siglier. Siglier. I'm gonna try to get this right. Siglier in the top lane. Nova Wolf in the jungle. Much easier to say. Plumber Mario in the mid lane. Forbidden as their AD carry and Quicksands as their support. If you are playing the support role for Orange, go through them if you wouldn't mind after you jump into spectate. Yep, uh, for Orange, we've got Anti-Faust in the top lane, Greggy in the jungle, we've got Mobster Penguin 42 in the mid lane, Korean AD Smurf in the bottom lane ADC role, and Moose rounding it out in the bottom lane supportive role, and I almost said my name, and I'm like, wait a second. I'm not playing in the bottom lane supportive role. That's not my thing. That's not right. Well, there you are in oh. and we are clean, ready to start it up as we get into the picks and bans for the final scrim gym game of the evening. The champion of this game will go on to be the number one seed and uh, the uh, team that gets streamed for game number one of next week's Scrim Gym. So if you're looking for more stream time, if you want your fans to come out and cheer you on while you're on the stream, winning this game not only carries the clout of being the champion, but also getting a bit more time to be shoutcasted instead of being in that other half of the bracket that nobody gets to see. <laughs> Don't be one of those guys. Yeah. No, um, wow, Vladimir and Cassiopeia both take it off the table, which is kind of funny because Cassiopeia is a counter to Vladimir. Um, Vayne banned away. These are obviously targeted bans, very rarely. Usually when I ban Vayne, it's to keep people on my team from playing Vayne top. Um, but that being said, Vayne taken away, uh, Korean 80 Smurf. Oh, and it's the Kaisa immediately picked up as uh, we saw Forbidden played that very well in the last game. Rakan picked up and it's most likely going to be the Zaya locked in as the second pick and yes it is the Lovers duo in the bot lane. Incredibly powerful duo lane. Really useful late game. Rakan's engages are absolutely clutch as well as the Zaya combination with the Q and the E for the Feather Recall. You can get Blade Collar for a large amount of damage or just an instantaneous root with a little bit of burst attached to it. Either way, very powerful pick. Janna. Janna has kind of changed from a super shield oriented champion that she mm -hmm. used to be back in season six into more of a poke. I'm just going to walk up, press W, and you're going to get hurt. And it's going to cause, you're going to take a good amount of emotional damage from just this Janna coming by, throwing a bird at you, and then walking backwards. 
Well, the big deal uh, for that Janna is not being in range of her cons engage because even though she does have a nice shield and even though she does have some nice poke, she is still a very squishy champion, very easy to burst down, very easy to CC as well considering she doesn't have that much mobility besides a little bit of faster movement speed, but in early game, especially pre-boots, it's not going to mean that much. And so it needs to play on the safe side and let Rakan try to engage on Kai'Sa and shield the Kai'Sa so that she can get some return damage as well because the level one out of her con and Zaya is always something to be scared of. Level one and level three. Like, level one's terrifying. Level three is really deadly. Once Kaisa has access to every one of her skills, um, then their combination becomes really, really, really potent. But the thing is, is that Janna can actually deny her con's engage if she releases the tornado at the same time. It'll knock him out of his his grand entrance. So, of course, no. Uh, of co uh, quicksand's going to have to have quick fingers for that particular play, but definitely can outplay that particular moment and uh, make uh, Moose play a little bit more respectful of the Janna and still lay down the hurt. Kiana? No, band away. Yeah. I thought that was locked in. I was gonna say. Hey, she's still super powerful in that mid lane. Great engage. The big thing is, especially when it comes to that mid to late game, grabbing the river as a ultimate option to stun up the entire enemy team. Not ultimate, but I think it's her uh, W, if I remember correctly, uh, before throwing out that ultimate for a ton of damage, which is the a supreme display of talent. Uh, yes, I do know some of these champion names. I try to learn. I try to learn. However, Swagnar, keep testing me this is big if you're in my twitch chat ever feel free to toss in what is this champion's name especially if you know it because being tested is the best way to learn vi's the champion locked in though for orange in the jungle great engage press r cc enemy champion but tends to over dive you can't over dive though if you're joined by a pantheon when you're deeply engaging like that so like the two of them they're running very heavy ad we need to see some big ap in the mid lane to round out their damage Yep. Uh, at the moment, I am not liking this Pantheon pick. Uh, we discussed it in the first game. Pantheon, originally a very powerful lane bully who turned into just an absolute steaming dog turd at the end of the game. Now he's a steaming dog turd at the beginning and one late game. Pretty much. He's kind of he's just very disappointing as a champion i have yet to see a game that was really influenced <clears throat> by the pantheon pickup yet um it's a little frustrating as i was saying from the adc's perspective to have yet another wind wall to exist in the game but at the moment while he is a very lane or fairly lane dominant not nearly so much as he used to be champion he's still not all that impressive in toward that late game so it's kind of I'm not very impressed with him as a champion, and Renekton can definitely deal with him in the top lane. Whoever wins this is going to win the split push war at the end, and that's going to be heavily affected by jungle intervention. We've seen Nova Wolf really play some fine jungle presence. Uh, one of the main reasons picking off the opposing jungler in the last game two and even i believe three separate times he managed to get the skarner grab down onto his opponent his opposing jungler and drag him into the enemy team so some really good jungling from that and i'm wanting to see a kind of a combination gang with lissandra and jarvin it's just so incredibly powerful with the amount of lockdown they have yes it's, it's just disgusting. <laughs> it's super CC when you're looking at Grand Canyon University. The Lissandra, especially post six, press R, ult someone, hold them in place, set up for the Jarvan flag and drag to get the knockup, but he also has Cataclysm if they have no flash available, or at least force the flash for them to have to burn that to try to escape. Renekton brings his stun when he's up close and personal. Janna brings tornadoes to the party. There's a lot of CC that can be both layered or used to pick from Grand Canyon, and the thing I really 
want to see is Nova Wolf on this Jarvan. He is a champion that can make or break a game. If he's on time with his engages, if he's there where he needs to be to find the knockups and start some plays, or be able to respond to enemy team over aggressively pushing something, he is a huge champion. But if he's late or always arrives after a fight has happened, he can just fall to the wayside and be unimpactful. You can roll him strong AD, you can roll him engage, you can roll him tank. A lot of options there, and I want to see Nova Wolf really uh, what he decides to pour into when it comes to how to impact the lanes with this champion. But as you're talking about with the CC coming out of Grand Canyon, on the side of Orange, it is about AOE damage. The Zaya Feathers, the Orianna Ultimate, even Pantheon being able to into that mid game, especially if it builds a Tiamat, can bring some big AOE combo fights and damage if they're looking to group. Whereas Pick, you're just relying on that Vi or the root from Zaya. Yeah, and I want to comment that the, especially on the Jarvan Pick, the Cataclysm is particularly effective in this game because only two members actually have dashes. Um, Pantheon could do some interesting nonsense using his, uh, his W to stun somebody who's outside and managed to jump outside of Cataclysm, but for the most part, um, unless Flash is up, Zaya, Orianna, and Pantheon are gonna have a real tough time escaping, uh, Cataclysm. Rakan, I mean, if you're, if you're ulting Rakan, you're doing it wrong anyway. <laughs> And you can stop Vi from dashing out of Cataclysm if you just stand on her. Right. Uh, Vault Breaker will run into uh, into your champion model before it takes her over the wall. So really, only one champion has a guaranteed escape from the Jarvan Ultimate. So that's something something to note, and definitely a good pickup. I like to see it. Also, what I like to see, Kaisa. I've started playing that champion a little bit more just because she's been so retardedly overtuned for so long. Um, she's so much fun to play. Like it, this. So this is what it feels like, where you can actually one v one some someone as an ADC and having a prayer of winning, just by straight skill. It's like usually if a champion from another role tries to one v one you as an AD, unless you're just stupidly fed or it's 40 minutes, you're probably going to lose. ADs have a real difficult time 1v1ing unless you're one of the uh, one of the few duelist sort of ADs, you know, Vayne, uh, Lucian, Kaisa, that sort of a thing. But Jin doesn't 1v1 people very well. Unless no, but that's right that's why ADC's 1v1ing, not so good, but that's why you have a support to join with them. And as we've talked about, that lovers duo on the bottom of Y2150 Orange could be super impactful just because of how those two synergize well together. We'll see if Moose and Kareen can bring the pain to the table. We're into the finals. Ladies and gentlemen, Grand Canyon University Esports taking on Y2150 orange tonight as we do have that sister team of blue that also sometimes plays in the scrim gyms and hopefully we get a really good game i asked earlier whether or not people were looking for a 41 minute slug fest or if they were interested in a short 25 minute fiesta bash not many people responded personally i definitely favor the high action of the 21 minute fiesta but i cannot complain about grand canyon and their use of turtling and protection to wait until the right moment to strike. and they striked at the right time last game and it won them the game Yep, definitely. And we'll see what they manage to do. Are they going to give up the early game like they did last time? Or are they going to push through to victory and just snowball themselves into a win? Only time will tell. As we get in to the final game of this week's Scrim Jam. Oh, and the actual act damage coming out from this Orianna as she auto attacks Nova Wolf a couple of times and then walks away. It's insane. The hype's so crazy. Just, 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 just kidding. Uh... Yeah. Award came down, so uh, if the uh, side of yes, this is a best of one runs through at that ward, they're going to be seen, and we'll see where Vi decides to actually go to. One of the nice things that Vi can do, though, is actually come around this long way of, to avoid the ward if they know that it was there, which they should. As Jarvan will start up his red buff, he could try a cheesy level two gank in the bot lane. Looks like he's going to grab those crubs to start things off, though, which means he should probably be low enough health not to gank bot lane immediately. Yeah, and both. Uh... Both of these junglers do have level 2 pressure. Um, so something interesting Jarvan could have done is come down and do that cheeky level 2 gank onto the bot side. Uh, ooh. 
a little bit of engage here, but Moose taking a ton of damage. Good lord, the trades coming out from Forbidden uh, Quicksands. You almost never win trades against Zaya Rakan level one, but they did manage to do that and do so handedly. Uh, Pot's being chugged in the bot side by both members, um, and it's going to be level two, so they, uh, Quicksands and Forbidden, going to have to back off here. The level two and level three spikes from Zaya Rakan are very potent. But Quicksand still managing to drop the Zephyr down onto Moose, getting a decent amount of damage down. And just continue throwing that bird. Zephyr yes. coming out and poking just bit by bit. It also makes Moose reconsider sometimes jumping in because even if he doesn't, or especially if he doesn't find the knock up, he's going to be slowed while walking out, which means Kais is going to have some time to just harass him out. And you can see his health continuing to be chunked. He's popping those biscuits trying to heal back up. And things could get a little bit dangerous depending on how much more Quicksands wants to poke. Panther in the top lane, had a little bit of sun as Siglier on that Renekton. He's going to be dashing away, really wanting to hit level 6 before starting anything spicy in that top lane. Yeah, and the thing is, is that uh, Rakan's now out of... Hold up! Oh, uh, Nova Wolf's in trouble! Hey, the flag was actually the wrong spot, trying to use it to finish off that blue buff. He goes down first blood to Greggy. That's why 2150 Orange will strike early and a great invade from Vi. Just finds Noble Wolf at the wrong time. Yeah, excellent play there. And Nova Wolf, I don't know why he was so low. Oh yeah, he did a full clear and he went to Krug's first. Took a ton of extra damage there. And I think Vi noticing... Uh, Shoot! I, oh no, no, wait. She had a she had a ward on it. Never mind. I think that ward may have been placed afterwards. I'm not sure. Swagnar from the Twitch chat is saying that Vi blind queued into that jungle just to kind of catch out and see if Jarvan was there and found that Jarvan. Jarvan being that uh, kill, which is very nice to start off early, early, early damage from her could also help her get to that level six, the crucial level six for the assault and battery early on. As she's now towards that bot lane, the Vi looking for that root's gonna miss it. And that means Vi's going to be walking away empty-handed. Pantheon in the top lane. Sorry, not Pantheon, excuse me. Uh, it is Pantheon, anti Faust walking away, but it was Jarvan that came in for a gank, didn't find anything. Yeah, Vi down on the spot side, uh, and the thing is, anti Faust was out of mana right there. Um, gank, not necessary. Uh, he was going to have to go back anyway, but there was definite possibility of a kill coming through there. I did not see... Oh, yeah, no, anti Faust did actually have to blow the flash, um, as well as the teleport, so that there were definite, uh, benefits to that gank. I take that back. He could also, the Jarvan, Nova Wolf, look for a repeat gank. He's headed up there as well. Renekton trying to back. We'll see if his cool, uh, is... It is. All right, he's gonna keep it, even though Jarvan was right around the corner. I'm very... He should, she should have gone through with that. Oh, but he's TPing in, so he might have been wanting to buy before this next fight. There he comes, TPing in, looking for the sun onto Anti Faust. He dashes in, slice Go and dice. Nice EQ from the Jarvan, though, setting that slow up. Anti Faust will fall. Renekton picking up that kill in the top lane. So kills traded one for one for both teams. Now the buy in the bot lane. Greggy looking for the engage. Quicksand Tornado only gonna land. Oh, oh. Con. he dashes forward, forcing out the flash for Quicksand, so she's got to slow backwards. Moose taking a lot of damage. See the Cathy and Rank coming out for forbidden. But the Kaisa just has too low mana. Cannot find the kill on Rakan, but good disengage. Yeah, but the disengage there, I mean, if you manage to get out of the gank, you've wasted the jungler's time. Granted, it was a flash, but the Rakan did also blow the flash to try and force that engage. So it's a one for one flash trade, and the jungler's time is wasted, Actually, whereas the jungler. Rakan didn't burn flash, and Kaisa also burned heal. So it was oh. still fairly favored into Orange's side. Just wanted to, to make mention of that very quickly as they're onto the Mountain Drake. Should be able to secure it. Uh, Jarvan still paying attention to that top side of the map. Not getting a whole lot after that early kill for the Renekton. So Mountain Drake goes over to Orange to start off game number three. Mm, yeah. So we saw a good bit of priority being placed over by Gigabytes on toward those uh those dragons however unfortunately for them they none of the drakes that they got were very crucial this time around mountain drake early can definitely provide a little bit of pressure toward the uh the rift herald as well as future drakes and the all-important baron in the late game um all in all the baron taking presence of this team aside from 
from the Zaya is not terribly impressive. Um, Kais is probably the best uh, the best taker of that. Honestly. Darvin, Nova Wolf takes away the Scuttle mm. Crab. Is he going to take the Flag and Dragger over the wall? He does, just in time to avoid Greggy's Assault and Battery. Or just Q, sorry, coming in. Not going to find anything there. So able to grab himself a nice Scuttle and back away. He's headed back to the Fountain to refresh, maybe pick up early boots to give himself some of that movement speed around the map. So far, gold is tied up between the two teams as we're hitting that seven minute mark. Not too many plates gone down. One in the top lane for Grand Canyon. Other than that, it's still fairly even. A lot of laning, a lot of farming. Farm fairly even between all lanes. Only that bottom lane, Zaya, a uh, Korean, really coming out with a lead against Kaisa. Yeah. And that's to be expected. The Lover's Duo always provides a ton of pressure. Um, you have to always play very carefully around a Rakan, and they're about to hit their level 6 power spike here in a second. Nova Wolf down here, trying to, uh, hold on. They're gonna come up, and they're gonna face check. Wait, what? Okay. The dragon, the dragon, then the flag? Hmm. Hmm. A little bit of mistiming, maybe miscommunication, and may have been okay with that, considering that the response from Orange was already no one really going to be too caught out with that, considering there was a Vi around the corner, even though they may not have known that. Look at the control ward control from Orange, though, down here. They have four wards throughout this river, and then one in this bottom lane brush as well. So that is, or sorry, a total of four wards in this bottom lane. That is some really major vision control down on this bottom half of the map. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're definitely right about that, Jake. It's very impressive to see that many control wards dropped in a game um, all at the same time. That means three separate members have all bought control wards and have also actually taken the time to place them. I always like seeing some uh, people focus more on vision. Vision wins games, guys. Fundamentals of League of Legends and all of that. Well, it helps them stuff. to grab that early Mountain Drake. We do have a second Mountain Drake coming up in two minutes. And as you said, last game, the Ocean Drakes, the Gigabytes were able to grab, allowed them to kind of turtle with Grand Canyon until Grand Canyon found themselves that near ace and got the Baron to kind of turn things around in their favor. But this game around, double mountains would allow for such fast turret clearing, objective clearing, even the Elder Drake, if we do get to that point yet again. And it is a lot more dangerous for Grand Canyon to give over those Drakes as objectives yeah and meanwhile the freeze coming through here from Kai, uh, from Zaya I'm loving to see this I very rarely get to see people control waves well you can win lane simply by wave control because right now had she allowed that to crash into her turret okay she probably would have gotten all the stuff hold on right now anti faust Nova's got the ultimate cataclysm on it two members for next in there as well does he pop the ultimate he does so he'll be tanky enough to get out. The TP coming in from the Lissandra will force the members of Orange to back away. Not interested in fighting 3v2. So Grand Canyon get all their members out alive. Bit risky, though, for that engage. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Meanwhile, in the bot side, close to a, ten, a 20 CS advantage built up. Also, the teleport was expended toward the top side. But... Forbidden backing there without breaking the freeze simply means that he loses out on every single minion. I believe that's three waves of minions that he would lose out on. Moose going to take a little bit of counter damage, but actually managed to get more down onto the uh, the ADC. Korean eighty up. Uh, oh. Oh, there's a bit of trouble as Rakan going to be going in, fighting the knock of Forbidden in trouble. Igniting oh! away, but the feathers are going to miss with the flash. Quick stance, looking for the slow, trying to finish off Korean. Oh, the feather sword to avoid the Void Seeker. That's a kill for the Jan. Oh, the Kazaya comes out with that kill. Backs away. Jarvan did roam down into the bottom lane. She could try to re-engage. The Sodder going to take the claw. Great clear on that control before hitting between the back of the Dragon Pit. Both junglers down here as the Mountain Drake seconds away from spawning, but I don't think they're going to jump onto it immediately. Yeah, that was so good from Quicksands. That particular Forbid needs to back off here. Gre uh, Greggy, I believe, has access to ultimate right now. And yeah, if Jarvis going to go forward, Korean's in trouble. We'll go down. The Rakan cannot save him. TP in for the Pantheon as well. Singlier is going to be able to help pick up one member. The Kaisa picks up another as Forbidden finally finds their first kill of the game. And now is the Pantheon in a bit of trouble. Throws out that shield. Rakan's got a two-man knockup, but it's the Kaisa that's got the damage. Rakan's got the stun as well. Anti-Faustion. 
Oh, he's gonna take one with him though as he goes down. Oriana dies to the Lissandra in the mid lane. You can see her ultimate was expended to take Mobster Penguin down. It's a five for three game as only a thousand gold lead for Grand Canyon. Yeah, Grand Canyon was really far behind and then comes out swinging with that massive play in the bot side. They bring the jungler down and they thought, hey, we're just going to dive the Kai'Sa and then gets a bunch of tower plates, but they weren't watching behind them. TP comes in, here's Renekton, and then Nova Wolf shows up, flag and drag to engage and forbidden kites excellently right on the edge of the fight. And they managed to turn that around and pick them themselves up a fair number of kills and the advantage back in bot side. Now we'll see what they can actually do with that. The Kais is completed off that man immune. It's gonna take a little bit of while before actually finishing and completing that tier as the Zayat goes for that Essence Reaver to get a few more Feather Storms out. Great use of it earlier to find the outplay onto that Janna. Maybe needing it sooner than later as the team from Grand Canyon are collapsing looking to stop the second Mountain Drake from going over to Y2150 Orange. Whoa, Korea is well, gone! What the damage is Jana finds a bit of that Zephyr to get the slow and the Akathian rain comes out from Forbidden. It's now Grand Canyon starting with the Mountain Drake for their own. Yeah, that's gonna just be a free Mountain Drake. Uh, never get caught up uh, trading around those control wards. Uh, Korean Smurf just like decided he was going to give that a shot. Good knockup comes through from Janna as well as some poke and uh, the AD goes, Hey, I wanna I wanna go for some fights here and I wasn't watching her map and at the moment Kaisa had roamed up and uh, I mean Kaisa does a lot of burst damage. Well, and the slow out of the Zephyr from Janna needs to be respected. It is a hefty, hefty slow, and the team not being there and her not having that Featherstorm up and available, it's very hard to escape without something like that Rakan to at least, you know, cause the enemy team to rethink going in for that kill. Yeah, and the big thing is, is that while Zaya was so far ahead in CS, and still is almost exactly 30 CS up over her opposite number, and that will continue to grow here, um, the two solo turret plates that Kaisa just received, plus the two kills, puts them back even, whereas she was very far behind uh, just moments ago. So that was a very unfortunate mistake from the Zaya. Uh, which really kind of throws away the lead that they had built for themselves uh, from the clever laning they were doing in bot side. <coughs> Rift Herald going to be going down, so Nova Wolf She's will have that. Again. We'll see what you do that Feather Storm to avoid the tornado. The Rakan is here, though. Can he find the quickness? Charming up the Zaya. Forbidden getting a lot of killing off of Quicksand's ultimate, but the Kais is going to be separated now in the mid lane. The Jarvan locking down the Oriana, as you said. She's got no escape. They're under the turret looking for Forbidden. The heal coming through. Rakan goes gold to survive. Quicksand's not going to be knocked up, but it's dropping in help. Rakan gets a little bit of shield. The turret takes down the Zaya. Korean sticking around way too long. Vi shows up. Greggy trying to defend this mid lane first tier turret, but the Rift Herald is in, shattering it with a slam. It's eight kills to four, and a 3,000 gold lead to Grand Canyon. Look to change the pace from game number two. Yeah, a lot of resources expended in the bot side. Uh, the ults from, I believe, everybody. Unfortunately, Kaisa trying to go for the fancy outplay in the middle, using her ultimate to dodge the Feather Storm, but uh, the Feather Storm was not actually on target, so she dodged into it. Um... We can either call that 3,000 IQ from Zaya or 150, like 100 IQ from uh, the We'll Kaisa. go with the 3,000 IQ. We're a positive <coughs> community here, and uh, we'll say that it was the prediction from the Zaya. We're, we're the more yin and yang. You see, it's like you're okay. the you're you're the sunshine. I am the darkness. Well, it's sunshine for Grand Canyon as they pick themselves up that first tier turret in the top lane. It's their second turret of the game as they will continue to escalate this gold lead. Only the bottom lane turret left up and available for the Zaya or for the sorry Janna and Kaisa to pick up if they so desire. And now I want to see Grand Canyon doing what they do so well, especially in game number two, which is grouping and collecting collapsing, looking for the big team fights and picking their target selection very carefully. Oh, look at the mini-map. We've got the engage coming down here. That's Plum over. Here. That's the ultimate out from Lissandra. They're looking for the Zaya. She doesn't need the ultimate this time around because Lissandra going under the turret is going to die. Forbidden getting the uh, ultimate to try to get a little bit of shielding. The Vi uh, will drop as Nova Wolf picks her up. Coming at the last second. Oh, killer instinct. Not Woo! already used. Excuse me. It's just the Void Seeker. 
coming out. Wait, was that the shockwave? It was. We're going to shockwave whipping. Double kill for Jarvis as he goes under the turret and he gets out as well. Nova Wolf is a monster. Looking up for Monster Penguin next. It's the Captain Ren from Forbidden to take her down. A near ace for the side of Grand Canyon as Orange just falls apart in the bottom lane. Yeah, too aggressive from Orange. They pick the Lovers duo, but they're playing a little bit too ham at the moment. And Forbidden and Quicksands managing to stay alive in the in the inferior laning setup and the ganks coming through despite the fact that the Lissandra goes down early to the Featherstorm underneath the turret. Nova Wolf is not going to be denied, and while the enemy jungler goes in onto the ADC, uh, Quicksands manages to peel that off, and then Nova Wolf under the turret, flag drag cataclysm, and manages to destroy the bot lane. Greggy on the top side, though, anti Faust here. Yeah, two v one trying to escape. He's got the stun. Two v one damage. Oh, the slice is oh! nice. He's got it. Double kill for their next in solo with the top lane. Moose hopping over the wall, joining Desire to escape. But at this point, Grand Canyon are carving themselves a <laughs> huge lead. They are just taking Colorado River right into the win 14 kills to five a 6,000 gold lead and infernal drake is coming up next plumber mario coming over the wall looking for the oriana she's got that ultimate but shockwave not going to do that much of forbidden and she will fall plumber mario stealing it away we're going to get the fitness on to far uh, nova wolf as he's just trying to escape the zai getting a little bit of damage but what can you do when it is a jorvan who has that black cleaver and you alone have a, just a touch of damage with that essence reaver mid lane second tier turret will fall infernal is up for karen Canyon to grab. Yeah, and I think the bigger story here is the fact that Renekton just 2v1 the top laner in the jungler. Um, how do you answer him now? He's so big, especially now an Infernal Drake. Now an Infernal Drake on top of that. The Renekton is massive. 5 and 0 oh in the top side and can now just prove because it wasn't even close. It's not like, oh, he just barely outplayed them and got lucky. They missed some ability. No, they hit everything, and they still got absolutely destroyed. So how do you answer the Renekton on the top side? What do you bring against him? Do you put your bot, uh, your bot lane up there? I think that he might be able to handle them as well. Oh, it so would that, be so that's, dangerous. <laughs> yeah, so that's two... Um, that's two resources that have to be committed to the top side uh, wherever this him. Renekton goes. There's a vice and hi to Nova Wolf. They're just kind of poking each other and then backing away. But I very quickly wanted to make a <coughs> server-wide announcement. The uh, raid boss Renekton has been discovered. Uh, bring elite gear only. <laughs> the raid boss of Renekton is online. Nova Wolf saying, hey, I'm a raid boss too. Cataclysm catches the side inside of the Feather Storm Ultimate. Greg is going to be up next. The Pantheon ulting it, but might be ulting it only to die. Hey, you can feel good that he got the red buff, but he has fallen. And Ty Faust will be right back to the fountain. Moose heading away as he can do nothing to stop the team. The side of Grand Ken from grabbing the Baron for themselves. Yeah, and I was saying in the in the selection that this game is going to have so many problems with Jarvan. Nova Wolf has been just the massive factor that has tilted all of these lanes in his favor. Nova Wolf with the Cataclysm. I've said that there are only there's only really one member who has a consistent way of getting outside of Cataclysm, and despite the fact that Zaya managed to get off the Feather Storm, it didn't matter. She couldn't give Feather Storm doesn't phase through walls. Mm -hmm. Still comes down, caught in there, and just absolutely blown up by the damage of Grand Canyon right there. So Nova Wolf really looking for that MVP right now. And keep in no. mind, Nova Wolf picked up this Jarvan very early into the draft. So it was orange. They'd already got, like, locked themselves in the Zaya and Rakan. Unfortunate they had that Zaya, but they did grab a strong bot lane. So not the end of the world. But the rest of their composition was picked knowing that this Jarvan and Cataclysm were going to be in the game. And sometimes when it comes down to these picks and ban drafts, you just cannot pick a team that's going to die inside of that Clasm time and time again. Goodbye to the Oriana. Like Cataclysm not even needed this time. 
time for Bitten picks up the kill. Kill oh. Instinct used to chase another con and the Zaya fires over the wall, punching away onto the Kaisa Assault and Battery, but she's just going to flash as Greggy now on the run for Bitten's got the damage. Kathy and Rain only half of it hit and still get the kill. The Redection's on taking down the Zaya. Rakan as well. One and one half and well. the other. They're gonna get both of them. It's a two for one. Singler is not done just yet. Looking for anti Faust's Pantheon. He's inside the enemy team base. The Cataclysm with a flash from anti Faust. Jarvis on death. Flags and drags to the fountain. He's got the actual kill. It's 23 kills to five. Grand Canyon Ver University Esports absolutely staking their claim in the scrim gym. They want history to be rewritten as they will decimate Orange in these finals and they will claim game number three as the new Excellency Midweight Champions. That was a game. It's how that you started make a off, statement. That started off so bad for Grand Canyon. The early game, they were getting slammed in all lanes. And then Nova Wolf comes in, ganking like a monster, gets the turnaround in bot side, the ganks in the top side. And then that sets Renekton off to just snowball in top lane. The mid lane, the solo kills coming out of the Lissandra, and then opening up to roam down to bot was just a slugfest in bot lane the whole time. But I've got to give it to this jungler, Nova Wolf, absolutely clutch. But I mean, come on, the whole team just did insane. Forbidden playing out of his mind on the Kaisa, despite the fact that they had a good amount of dive and pressure on him the whole time. Quicksands with so many critical disengages using both the ultimate and a few clever tornadoes to just completely stuff and deny engages and keep his ADC alive. Plumber Mario, incredible just play in lane personally, beat the snot out of the Orianna. Great play there. And then in the top side, you had the 2v1 outplay from the Renekton. And I don't know if you can technically even call it an outplay because it was just kind of a stat check at that point. And he was like, well, y'all die. It was like when you try and step to the Nasus who has 500 stacks and you're like, I'm going to kill you. He's like, no, you're not. Whoop! You're dead. And that's pretty much what happened. Yep, so why 2150 Orange? They had a few moments that things looked good. Their bottom lane looked pretty spicy. I liked Greggy's attention into that bottom lane, though it did leave their top lane kind of out to dry throughout that. But honestly, they need to go back to the drawing board, reconsider when it comes to the picks and bans. And if you're going to be picking a team that really looks for those neutral objectives in 5v5 plays with the collapse of the Pantheon, then they need to play these lanes safe you can't have your Oriana mid lane dying to Lissandra 0-6-0 in that game. A very rough one for Orange, but just huge success from Grand Canyon. Looked so much better. It was half the game time from game number two. We could go on and on about it. However, we've got ourselves a couple of people from the side of Grand Canyon University Esports in for an interview. Wraith, if you would join me on the Excellency chat. If you can't re go into staff meeting, just join General and I'll pull you in for an interview with Forbidden and Nova Wolf, the, uh, what we would agree is the MVP of this game. Should have thought about the ward. Hello, 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 Grand Canyon University Esports, the champions of this <laughs> Scrim Gym Week 17. How does it feel to go from a 41 minute slugfest, even gold, <laughs> until the very last play to a 22 minute decimation? It feels pretty good, honestly. Uh, you know, definitely a different pace of game. Felt really good to pop off towards the end. <laughs> We were a little tired, but once we got pizza in our bellies, it was just a pure oh, win. Oh, it's the pizza. <laughs> it was the pizza. The pizza power buff. Understandable. Yes. Everyone can respect the pizza power buff. Hey, for any other team that's watching, take the notes. Take notes right now. Grab pizza. Win game. Easy peasy. All right. Well, Nova Wolf, we have crowned you the MVP of this uh, last game. But I would even say from the two games we watched you tonight, you did fantastic. Tell us a little bit about how you came into being a jungler and work with this team. Uh, you know, I uh, just overall being a jungler, uh, I just sucked at laning. <laughs> so I just... <laughs> 
so it's like guys die every time, so I'm just gonna figure out I can't die early. Um, and it's just my viewpoint as being a jungler for this team is just kind of what I need to do to make get my team the best best standing they can do. You know, what do I need to do? Even if it's sacrificing, you know, CS, my one of some of my camps. If I can put my team ahead, I'm gonna do that. And we saw you doing that throughout the games. Very well done. The ganks in both top and bot side really managed to swing what was a a fairly losing game, tending toward that. It was right on the cusp where it could have snowballed out of control, but then you managed to turn it around and, and with help from all of your laners who were playing out of their minds. Well done, all of you guys. For sure. <laughs> All right, well, with that, uh, Siglier, uh, tell me really quickly, did I see your name at all correctly throughout the, uh, the, the casting? This is one of those names that there's so many different <laughs> options on how you could try to say it. If you would do me the honor, how do you say it? How is it supposed to be said? You know, personally, I just say Siglier. Siglier, yes. okay. Yep. So I, I can't go to bed feeling <laughs> horrible about myself. I at least get to pat myself on the back that half the time I said it correctly. You did amazing in both games we saw you tonight. The Orin in game number two, the Renekton in game number three. You went from a tanky uh, initiator to a bruiser carry. Uh, or, do you do you have just... I do believe I play Singed. Oh, Singed. Excuse me. I apologize. I apologize. Orin was game number one of the night. Uh, so you went from, well, I guess... <laughs> no, no, I didn't play any Singed and I AP bruiser? <laughs> <laughs> I played two Singed games in a Renekton. All right, well, we, we didn't get to see your, your first game of the night, so stream-wise, uh, we got to miss out on that one. But uh, about your pool specifically, though, do you like these um, more bruisery champions, um, or is that what your team kind of relies on so that you can win your lane? Oh, for my champion pool, it's usually really off-meta, because I mean, basically a singed one-trick. I play singed and gangplank, just really off-meta champions, and no one really focuses ban then just hopefully uh, someone just target bans me for all these off meta champion that no one knows how to play against. Hey, hard to be uh, banned, uh, banned away when everyone's going, wait, nobody even plays that anymore, why? Yeah, it's kind of like the Talia jungle, but it actually worked. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then another question, or I guess it would probably be the last question of the, the night, but for you guys, and you, this is your first time playing in this scrim, Jim, how did you feel about it? Do you see it as something that, hey, it's Join a good time for having to find scrims and elevated. find teams that you can compete well against, or is it something that was just a little bit of fun, but uh, you've got better things to do as a university team specifically? Well, not that we don't have better things to do, but I mean, getting an easy dub every week is pretty just, Good for our morale, for one, <laughs> and also mm -hmm. just good for our team coordination. Easy dub. Ooh, ooh. Well, uh, we'll have to see if that comes true next week. As a couple of uh, Excellencies, big hitter teams did not play this week, so uh, you might have a bit harder competition when it comes to uh, next week's midweight scrim gyms. But uh, any last words, anything else you want to say? Both <laughs> any last over, words? Uh, watching <laughs> the uh, Twitch channel uh, to any fans, you know, your mom, if she's if she's checking out the stream right now. Uh, don't ban Singed. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mama Spate. <laughs> to anyone in the future, because you're gonna need it. Oh. 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 Well, the towel has been thrown. Thank you so much. Congratulations again, you guys, for being the champions this week. We look forward to seeing you back next week as well. Hope you guys have a fantastic night. Thanks for the journey. Thank you. And with that, we are going to call it an evening. Famous last words. Mama Spade, are you here? Wraith, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you back. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, would you like to sign us off? Yep. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for coming out and watching Excellency Midweight Scrim Gyms. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Beautiful. Now, very quickly, I do want to throw in here as well as we do switch to our end credit scene and get the, uh, the all those followers rolling. There's so many of you guys. I got to thank you all for your support.